All right, welcome back. I have the extreme privilege of standing next to a legend uh, within Boeing, a legend in aviation, uh, Joe Sutter, the chief project engineer on the original 747 program. Joe, I've read your book now twice. I'm still fascinated, and it's great to stand next to you and talk to you. Tell me about what you are thinking today, what are you are feeling today, seeing this plane uh, take off and land. Well, this is 41 years after the first flight. And it's amazing to me that this program has lasted that long. It says that the airplane basic design was right then, and it's still right today. There were some folks, Joe, back, back then, back in the 60s, who thought this may not be a good option, that this wasn't the future of aviation. Obviously, history has proved otherwise. I mean, talk about the doubts about this plane even back then. Well, there are a lot of people concerned about the fact that it was two and a half times bigger than the previous airplanes. People are looking at supersonic transport, predicting that would be the future. But this airplane had the basic design requirement of being a good long haul, high capacity pass airplane, but it had an equal design requirement of being a good freighter. And freight, the freight market was expanding rapidly then, and this airplane really made the freight market what it is today. Right, you talked about that. When, when this was in development, you thought you had to make it a good airplane for the freighter market because even if it didn't work out for the passenger side, it would have a future with cargo. That's exactly right. And so we laid down the requirement for a good passenger airplane, but we also had an equal requirement as a freighter. This led us to the concept of the wide body, which was the 747 was the first airplane to develop that concept, and it was the right architecture for both airplanes. It, it, it improved the capability of both the passenger airplane and the freighter, and it's why the airplane has lasted so long. It's still the right answer for both passenger and, and the market, and the freighter market. Right, and we were actually just looking at the airplane while you were talking there. I mean, there were folks who, including Pan Am, the launch customer, who had wanted you to build a double-decker, but you resisted. Yes, the uh, initial designs were for a double-decker. Uh, when we looked at both the passenger and the freighter configuration environment, we just didn't like it. And uh, we had listed all of the reasons why we didn't like it. Lack of uh, emergency egress capability, uh, lack of uh, commonality in freight containers, both the top and bottom, uh, lack of uh, cargo space in the lower belly, a lot of don'ts, if you will. And uh, so the fellows went to the drawing board, if you will, and after searching their brains and study, it was mainly done over the drawing board, no computers. They came up with a wide body concept. And when we first looked at it, we thought it might be heavy. But when we looked at the total payload capability, it turned out to be just as light as the uh, double-decker. If we had built a double-decker, the program would have not lasted 41 years. Yeah, and you know, looking, uh, looking back now these days, everyone you know, just takes computers for granted. But back then, you guys, you and your team were basically making all these drawings. I mean, you didn't have the computer technology you have today. Can you even imagine if you were designing the plane today, how much more you could have done? I think with or without computers, the initial airplane would look just like it did in those days. Uh, the computer lets you do things easier and maybe faster, uh, but what makes good airplanes is the people doing the work with their brains. And the, the reason the Boeing fellows could do such a good job is a company invested in things like their own transonic wind tunnel, uh, gave them the tools to do the proper research, and because the company was dedicated to the commercial airplane business, the fellows were in the right environment to do a good job. And the company continues to make investments, obviously, with the 787 and with the 747-8. Uh, um, what do you make of this airplane and, and the advances in terms of the new wing, and you know, John Cashman and I were talking earlier about how what a big improvement this engine was. When when you designed your plane, you had an engine that put out what 37,000 pounds of thrust, 
uh, 39,000. Now it's 67,000 pounds of thrust. What do you make of this airplane and the advances that you've seen? Well, the, the airplane has a basic architecture of the initial airplane, uh, but the wing is a new advanced airplane with new airfoils. It has uh, better materials in the structure, and the engines are about the fifth generation of engines. These engines put out more thrust, they burn less fuel, they are quieter, and the other thing they have is complete and total reliability. These engines will hang on the wings of an airplane for 10 years without taking them off to do an overhaul. It's amazing how reliable these engines are. And of course, that adds to the total safety of the system. So the engine advancements have been terrific. What do you see uh, 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the line for this airplane? Well, going back, the 747-400 has been the mainline high-capacity passenger and freighter for almost 20 years. It's lasted almost 20 years. It's now going to be replaced by the 747-8. I predict the sales of the 747-8 will be as good or better than those of the Dash 400. And 20 years from now, I think you younger fellows will be standing at the runway again to need the sex version of the 747 make a beautiful landing again. Well, you have a pretty good history of predicting uh, what the market will be like, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe in you on that. Um, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time and, and your expertise and, and to see sort of the legacy of what you've created for the Boeing company. Well, uh, you know, I had a great career at Boeing because of the, the, what the company let me do. Uh, it was a company that was forward-thinking, and it's a great place for anybody that wants to be in this business. It's great business. It's hard work. And sometimes the reward, re rewards are a little bit skinny and bad days like we're now facing. But the good times will come. And this airplane and the other Boeing airplanes are going to benefit from it because they do do the job. Well, your work's not done because I still see you around the building. You have an office. And we, we still keep, me, keep you and your expertise. And, and you continue to consult for us on our senior advisory group and really adding uh, sort of the experience. Because you've been through that. Uh, you've been through the design and the challenges. And, and you're helping us with um, both what we're developing now and into the future. And you have some very strong opinions, I know, about uh, well, the single aisle and, and, and the twin aisle. Oh, I have a lot of ideas on how to develop good airplanes. And I will vo voice my uh, comments to the fellas. Uh, they listen to me sometimes, and then sometimes they don't. But that's the give and take of Boeing. You put everything out on the table, argue it out, do the work, the analysis, and come up with the right answer. And that's the fun of working at Boeing. Joe, it's been an honor, a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks so much. And congratulations on this day for you as well, because it's a proud day for you. Thank you. you. It's, been a, it's been a very, very great day. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. All right, and while we're talking, um, we get to see the